Hey, what's up? Today, we are learning about 3D camera tracking. It's something so simple and so essential, and yet it can be so powerful in creating amazing VFX and motion graphics. So let's take a look at that. Okay. All right, so let's jump right in. Here is our beautiful After Effects interface, and we have some elements in our project panel, some shadow textures, and our footage that we're gonna track. So I'm gonna double click on that so we can get a preview. And I'm just gonna start thinking about ideas of where to place these new assets that we wanna track in. So maybe it's some light coming in from these openings. We can track some shadows on the walls or even on the floor here. So let's get started by dragging in our footage into a new composition. And now let's just add some textures just to kind of get a sense of where we want to go with this scene. So you can see that I have a bunch of shadow elements. These are from my shadows pack. And I honestly am such a fan of using them to break up textures. Let's hide these elements for now and let's select the footage again. Now under animation, we can hit track camera and it does the 3D camera tracking for you. Tutorial done. There you go. <laughs> It's honestly, yeah, it is actually that simple. This is what gives you the data that we're going to be using to add all the different things that we want into our scene. So once it's completed and it's solved, you can see that we have a bunch of these points in our scene. And these are what we're going to be using by making a selection to create a solid and a camera, which is pretty much what's getting us set up to have a 3D scene in After Effects. So as I scale this solid up, we can add an effect called grid, and this is gonna help us visualize if things are working and sticking properly. And we can rename this to be, for example, floor. And now if I scrub through, this should already be sticking to our scene. And you can see that the tracking actually did a, a beautiful job in solving distances and everything. And because we created a solid from those points that we selected on the floor, this 3D solid is basically sticking to that surface automatically. And one quick thing I wanna point out, if you do deselect the layer and even the effect within the layer, you're not gonna see the 3D camera tracking data. So you wanna make sure that your layer is selected and that your effect in the effects controls panel is selected so you can actually see these dots that we use to create a selection for the wall now. So we wanna make sure we get a nice wide range of selection and then we can right click in that kind of selected area and create a solid for our wall as well. So we can rename this to be left wall and we can scale this up a little bit. We can make some minor adjustments. You know, it's not always gonna be perfect uh, because you're relying on points that could be, you know, a little bit off from one another. It's not a, a perfectly flat surface. So in our case, there could have been a pipe or some offset in the brick wall that could be messing up our track. So there could still be some manual fine tuning that you still have to do. So that's why adding these grid effects and, and getting a good visual, a very clear sense of whether things are, are sticking properly is really important in this phase of the 3D camera tracking setup. But now that we have that, let's bring back one of our textures and let's get to stick them to our wall. So I'm gonna bring this shadow asset. I think it's the one that fits the most in this scene. And I'm actually gonna go under the solid that we created for the wall. And I'm gonna copy the position as well as the orientation parameters. And I'm gonna paste it onto our shadow. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that I'm changing that texture asset to a 3D layer and then pasting that information onto it. So you can see that it kind of disappeared, but all we have to do, just like what we have to do with the solid is just scale it up. So I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard and just scale it up and quick tip, if you do need to scale things by a lot, not just by a little, you can hold shift and that'll kind of scrub through those numbers a lot quicker and make you scale things a lot faster if things are really tiny. So now that we have that, again, it's the same idea. We wanna make some adjustments. We wanna place it well in our scene. So I'm actually gonna hide these solids real quick and I'm gonna change the look of this texture asset. So I'm actually gonna change the transfer mode. So I'm gonna go down here and toggle switches mode so I can bring back our transfer mode selection and I'm gonna select screen and you can see that right off the bat, it's a much nicer hotspot that is a little bit more true to the lighting of this scene. Now, obviously the sunlight and lighting angle is a little off, we're kind of forcing that, but in terms of shape and brightness, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. So we wanna make some minor adjustments, we wanna make sure that it fits right, and we have some room also to kind of feather out and mask out the bottom end so that we can ground it with the floor a little bit better and it doesn't have this kind of harsh cutoff line so we can set that mask to subtract and feather it out a bit. And already we're getting a much nicer point of contact. Now, of course, to take it one step further, let's try to add the same 
thing for the floor. So I'm gonna grab my uh, shadow texture and I'm gonna duplicate it. And just like what we did with the wall solid, we're gonna grab the information from the floor solid, the position and the orientation again. And we're gonna paste it onto that duplicate copy of our shadow asset. Now you can see that it kind of moved it in a really random looking spot in the in the floor and it's really hard to reposition things this way. So I'm gonna undo a couple steps to before we pasted those parameters from the solid. And I'm actually gonna hit A on my keyboard for the anchor point tool. And I'm gonna move the anchor point of this asset to the bottom, basically where it's making a point of contact with the other element. So now that I've done that, if I go back to my selection, and now if we paste those parameters again, you can see that it's kind of in a more uh, close area to where it's easier to kind of adjust that. And uh, you'll see why in a second too, when we want to scale things down, it's much nicer to have an anchor point uh, towards the bottom of that asset where you're trying to pair these things up, uh, because then you can kind of much more easily place them together. So I'm gonna nudge this floor shadow asset a little bit in. We can also make another mask to fit that floor element so that it really perfectly matches as a continuation from the shape of that light that is, uh, that is on the wall. And that's basically it. That's a very kind of advanced look at 3D camera tracking because not only do you know how to 3D camera track, which of, of course is the main thing, but also how to effectively use that data to place things on surfaces, uh, match them and link them together. It's a whole lot of fun. Of course, you could just have things just floating in the air. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that once you have a 3D camera in After Effects, you essentially have a whole 3D scene. So you don't necessarily have to have things stick to a wall or to a surface that's visible. You can have things float around. It's a whole 3D environment at that point. And that brings us to a secret weapon that I'm excited to share with you today. And that secret weapon is Motion Array. Motion Array has everything you need to create stunning videos. But actually, with this insane library of unlimited royalty-free stock assets, you can really take your projects and effects to a whole other level. So let's take a look at adding some of these alien assets, for example, into my space here. With what we learned about 3D camera tracking, we can now have these elements float in my room with just a few clicks. And we don't have to worry about building every single thing and animating every single thing from scratch anymore. You can really leverage all of these pre-made assets from a bunch of professionals. And seriously, this is how you stay ahead of the game as a freelancer, working with different clients and spicing up your edits for them in a time efficient way because time is money. And with a simple subscription, you can download every asset you need when you need it, from video templates and stock footage to photos, royalty-free music, sound effects. Honestly, it is so amazing to have all of these elements to build your videos all in one place. And this kind of gives me creative peace of mind so that I can really test things out and have fun while trying different effects or different looks for my edit. And whether you have a project right now that you're working on or maybe you wanna feel inspired for some new idea is, I highly encourage you to click the link in my description, even just to browse what Motion Array has to offer. I think it's a wonderful place to get inspired for effects, for motion graphics, ideas, and designs. And if you love it, as I'm sure you will, sign up today and unlock unlimited creativity. So please use my link in the description, support the channel, and sign up for Motion Array today. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video in learning 3D camera tracking in After Effects. And most importantly, I hope you are now inspired by the many new possibilities that have opened with just this way of tracking elements into your scene. So with that being said, check out my products and short films on my website, chriscart.com. And don't forget to check out Motion Array with my link in the description. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Quart, and I'll see you next time.